take zigzags. Yes, zigzags. Um, you can buy it anywhere, pretty much. Let's take a sheet here. On a thin... I usually run wicks a lot thicker than this, like an EC9 or a Machiavelli hybrid. Because um, this is a much smaller, thinner wick. I'm gonna cut this in half. Zigzag paper. Alright, now oops. I'm gonna cut it in half. Put it in the wick hole and this point before we go any further, as you can see the wick is a lot longer than the center pin. This is with the wick all the way down. We want to go ahead and trim that off. Okay. Uh, what I like to do is take out the rod. Saw this in a video. Once, crimp it, take it, and cut right about there, and cut off the top. Okay, so you can see it's pretty much closed off. Let's take the same rod. Stick it in the wick. Okay, and then roll it up. Get it left and right until the comes right out. It's just restored. So I don't know if we're gonna see it, but you can see huge hole. done and put it back in and put this back in to the hole now you could see that pretty much as long as the center post okay I don't know if you do notice that I kind of modded the AGA I fell in love with the AC9 only because of the whole spring load washer. I got really annoyed of atomizers when I first got into it because of this screw. As I screwed it in, it would either tighten up the coil or if I had the coil going, it would tighten up if I did it the coil clockwise over the, the center post and I tightened it and it would. Uh, tighten up the coil. If I did it counterclockwise, it would actually loosen up the coil. So I modded this. I used cut off, took a pen spring from a ballpoint pen and just cut it to size and then got a washer and then put it in. Just remove this center nut. Um, so you have the bottom nut to lock down the center post and the top nut to keep the spring and washer in place. It's definitely also the fact that the washer sticks out enough um, to kind of help with the hot spot on the top. Okay. So we put it back in. So now with the zigzag method, the point is is to wrap this zigzag paper on the only on the exposed area on top of the atomizer where the coil is going. Why? A perfect coil is basically the spacing um, between the coil and the the atomizer. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start this. So what I'm going to do, hold the wick and the rod 
together. Okay. And I'm going to take the zigzag paper and roll it. Just like when you're rolling up the wick. Okay. Just like so. Let's roll it up straight. I don't want it too tight. And you're going to have to make a few adjustments on it. So. That's perfectly fine. Okay, what I usually do to lock it in place is I candy wrap the top. Like a candy wrapper. Just to have it stay in place. Well, as you put it back in, hold the zigzag wick and you'll feel it and the rod together and stick it in the hole. Okay. So you can see zigzag paper needs to be adjusted up. And kind of feel in for the end of the wick and then push down more and it should be okay actually a little bit more I want a little bit of play on the bottom of the just a little bit of play you don't want the zigzag in the hole along with the wick it makes excess zigzag gets stuck inside as you try to burn it off. Now you notice the roll with the direction of where the wire is going, I have the roll going that same direction. If it zigzag was rolled uh, towards the wire, it might get, you know, stuck or whatnot. So I use it to have it direction of the of the uh where the wire is going to be coming from. So I have it counterclockwise, I have the roll of the zigzag counterclockwise. So leaving with the rod in there, the zigzag and the wick, it's now ready for the coil. Uh, for this demonstration, uh, I've been meeting a lot of people using the EGA and a Provari or a variable voltage device love the Provari so um, so I'm just gonna take wire this is 30 gauge canthal okay snap that off uh, this was in this little cardboard thing so I have to straighten the wire out doesn't have to be perfect. I usually take a my pick I use pick out the uh, coils. But this method should should if done right with a lot of practice have you not even touch a coil or you know after you wrap it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and loosen up the negative nut, or screw, okay, just a little bit, okay, how I get this going is this. I start from the opposite end, okay, hold it on one end, and then wrap it around, and then I hold it on with my, with my uh, fingers, and then I tighten up the negative screw. Okay, so 
So now you see that the wire is good. And that's your excess. We'll just leave it on there for now. Okay. Now at this point we can start doing the coil. Now I've been watching videos. I kind of added this method. I'm going to try it out on this video, but um seems to me that we're going to start the first coil. Now 30 gauge 5 wraps is kind of where I'm after because it's on a Provari. It should give you around one anywhere around 1.5. So I'm um, going to start it, start the first coil. So going around, now notice the first start. You can kind of gauge by how many, by your first coil and the angle of it on how many you can start wrapping right now. If I kept going like this, I can only do it three wraps and that's it. So what you need to do is, you know, get a, bring down the first coil. So the angle is a down more. Now, in regards to Peter K method, I've been watching the videos and everything. They like to crimp, kink the, the uh, wire play between the wick and the negative screw. I do that now. So what you do is you create a kink. Let's see here. Got to bring it up a little bit like that. And then kink it. sure if you could see that really well I kinked it see how it gave a little kink to it what that does is it prevents the hot spot from traveling in between the wick and the and the negative screw I've seen it happen Let's see if that crank is good enough and I'm doing it now because if as soon as I tighten it up, it's not going to be possible to do it so easily. So, and watch for your angle for your first coil. Bring that down. Okay. Now we can go ahead and start the coil. Okay. Even then, it only give me four wraps. So, what I'm going to do is bring it down a little bit more. And then right there, I think that should be good enough. So, now we're going to start wrapping it around. You're going to have to adjust each coil as you go down and fix the spacing out then you tighten it again this is a really tight because the zigzag is going to be already providing you the spacing so do it again that's three three wraps and again that is four. Okay. And can we do five? Yes, we can. I'm going to do five. And I'm going to pass the center post just before I was, I'm going to do another coil. 
Just fix that up a little bit. Okay. And then as you pass it, okay, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it in between the washer and the nut. And this is what I was talking about on ease of use. Okay. Now we're going to do another kink. I don't know if you could see it. You can see it right there. You want to create another kink. Great thing about the spring, no tightening. You want to make sure it, that the wire is touching the center post, though. Make a better contact. But we're going to create another kink in the positive post. And then you just... It's kind of tough, but you will get it. Now, if you see that, it's like a little kink. Now we have our coil with pretty much a best I can do as far as kinks are concerned. And you can see that coils are in place. Okay. So, at this point, I usually just leave the excess in case I need to make any more adjustments but I'm pretty you know confident but you know what we can do is put on a Provari okay um, set it to the lowest voltage I usually do like 3.2 okay now I'm going to burn it off. I don't know if you can see it. You want to pulsate three seconds in doing this because if you actually fire it, the hot spot, depending on the thin wire, the hot spot can actually um, break the wire. This is 30 gauge, so it's pretty pretty okay so but you know pulsate three at three seconds and then you can see it start you know burning pulsate you can kind of see where it's um oops. where it's burning off You should be able to already take out the top of the zigzag and then take the remove the actual rod now. And what I like to do at this point is burn off the excess and then blow at it. <laughs> See, it's already removed the zigzag, except for the bottom. Sometimes the bottom is a lot harder to deal with, but. There we go. At this point, you can kind of just remove the rest of it with the uh, with the pick. And blow it off. that one little piece right there Let's see if I can burn it off oh, there it is okay should be the end of it yep that's it so at this point, uh, you're good to go. Um, you could actually, you know, cut off the rest 
of the excess of the wires. Cut it pretty good. There we go. And on the negative post, and screwed it in pretty well. You can actually just wiggle this off. I can't wiggle the negative uh, positive post because of the fact that it's spring loaded. It might loosen up the connection. So anytime now. There we go. All right. So now we have this. Now we're going to go ahead and check the the resistance. One point seven. Yay! That's what I got yesterday. Okay, now just for you people that uh, is using a Provari, if it's a really good coil, you can get fifteen watts out of it. Okay, and the wattage is voltage times voltage uh, divided by resistance equals wattage. Now, uh, the highest I can get is just around 15 watts. It actually reads now at 1.6. Okay, and there's your glow. If you notice, it's not glowing all the way to the center post. Okay, if you noticed on the negative post. stops glowing right there and right there the kinks you can really see it now that's the Provari cutoff time you know you got a good one when you can just run the the coil you can kinda see the spacing on it to see. Now let's see how high I can go up. Let's try five. E two. So it looks like 4.8. Let's try 4.9. Nice. Okay, I think we got them. So, with a 4.9, 1.5, goes up really nice. Okay. I like it around there because you can actually just you know dumb it down for a good vape um, and save battery. Um, running at a really high voltage can really drain the battery real quick. So new juice that came out. Good friend of mine. Gusta. Custom juice. This one is Nanorbacco Shake Well. It's a nice little bottle. It 
is six milligram. I am a still a nicotine vapor. Three seven thirteen, newly made. Let's see how this this vapes. Take these out. Until it's up. Pretty thick juice. Should be okay. Take it. Oh wow. How the battery. And they're back up. And right now you can already see it's already saturated. It's already saturated. I didn't even have to tilt it. And you can see there's no hot spots. Oh, there it is. But saturate. Normal basis, you wouldn't be hitting it. And take it down a little bit. Four point six is cool. That's better. Definitely, if you can run through a Provari cutoff without any hot spots, you're good to go. See, that's why I use a rod. See how straight the wick is. Especially if you don't go to the spring washer mod modification, you can use a rod to help you, you know, when you do screw it in, that um, you can use a rod to, you know, pull away from the center post so as you screw it in it doesn't you know pull the the, the wick you know towards the center post okay so it's uh, oh, it's a version 2 uh, running at 1.5 ohm uh, 5 coil 30 gauge canthal uh, just built a coil uh, it's running on an EGAT too. Um, it's on a plus, it's just a plastic tank. Um, so uh, it's running at 4.6 volts. So here's how it beeps. This is a custom juice uh, banner backup, or nanner backup, sorry, uh, six milligrams.
It's really good. So, yeah, that's how you build it.